Well, hey, I'm joining you from my living room today because we've been cutifying it and it's much more presentable. So maybe I'll film in here sometimes. We are gathered here today to talk about what I watched in March. So this month I had a lot of rewatches. Let's just go on through them. Um, at the beginning of March, I worked on my best Jolly for summer video. So I was doing a lot of research, if you will. So I rewatched several Jolly that I thought could be contenders. So I watched Five Dolls for an August Moon and I really, I liked it even more the second time around. I think it's a really good one. Oh yeah, Five Dollars, Five Dollars, Five Dollars for an August Moon <laughs> is from 1970. Then I watched The Double, from 1971 um, and I still like it but mostly for the visual experience. Then I rewatched Bay of Blood 1971. I finally rewatched it and I don't know I just think it's okay. It's not weird. I think it's because there's not like a really there's not really a main character and I am not really a fan of the like swamp that they're basically in. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Next, I rewatched Baby Oopsie. Sorry. Then I rewatched Eye in the Labyrinth, 1972. And it's a banger. I really like that film. It's definitely a cuber. It's probably one that I would like to own. And then I rewatched libido from 1965. I was hoping it would fit into the jolly for summertime category because I did remember the house was on the ocean and I remember there was a really cute kitty cat swimsuit in the movie but overall the vibe just wasn't fitting for summer so it did not make the cut. I was still glad that I watched it though because that is one of my favorites. Next! I've been in a full mood moon this month, y'all. So I watched The Ginger Dead Man from 2005 for the first time. And I thought it was adorable. It was better than I hoped it would be. It was just really fun, very 2000s. And I don't know, it was charming. I thought it was darling and I would definitely watch it again. Next, I rewatched The Fourth Victim from 1971, hoping that it would perhaps fit in as a summertime giallo because its alternate title is of course Death of the Deep End of the Swimming Pool. This film was originally on my least favorite jolly list, but now I I like it. I think it's pretty good. It's not a Lindsay Baker giallo, but it is a pretty good Baker Jollo. Okay, next, Zach and I watched Fall from 2022. This is like a survival thriller, but honestly, you might as well call it a horror because it is terrifying. Um, if you don't know anything about it, it's about these two like rock climbers that decide to take on this new challenge where they climb like a 2000 foot TV tower that is abandoned. <laughs> It's just so freaking scary, man. It's so scary. Zach and I were both sweating, like actually sweating. Like I was like, oh my God, I cannot deal. It's just terrifying. It combines some really good horror elements. It's also a little bit like lifetime cheesy, but it's totally a fun movie. Next, I rewatched Naked You Die, AKA The Young, The Evil, and The Savage from 1968. And this was part of my summertime Jollo research. This was a rewatch. I don't know if I just said that. It's really good. This is a really good movie if you like the 60s Jolly that are just very light. Um, spoiler, this will probably make it into a part two of summertime Jolly, but it is making it to my first one. Okay, next, at the urging of my friend Matt. Hi, Matt. I watched Lake Mungo from 2008. This is an Australian what is this, like a mockumentary? Um, and it's like kind of horror, but kind of drama. It's really weird. I wasn't that big of a fan of it, 
but I did like the kinds of thoughts it left me with after the fact. But Lake Mungo is about, it's a mockumentary about this family in the aftermath of losing their teenage daughter in an accident. And it has like some paranormal elements, but it also just has to do with the family learning a lot more about who their daughter was. And um, so that element of it is pretty cool because it just reminds you that everybody is hiding something. What are you hiding? Next, I was, uh, I was enthusiastic. So we watched Ginger Dead Man 2, Passion of the Crust, AKA Ginger, Ginger Dead Man 2, Bakery of Blood. And this is from 2008. And this, uh, this was not good. It was just, it was very meta. And there were some parts of it that were funny, <laughs> but it was just a big old mess. It was not good. And next, my friend, The Gordon Knight, AKA Hello, I'm from the 90s. He and I were both interested in this movie called Psychopathics from 1996. If you are a Jalo fan, you may be familiar with this movie because of its cast. They have so many important people in this movie. And it is just like a kind of a parody, horror comedy parody that's shot on video and it was just terrible. It was terrible. I don't know, maybe I don't have a sense of humor or something, but I did not like it. But it was pretty interesting because it had to have been filmed right around the same time as Fatal Frames because it has Rick Genasi, Linnea Quigley, Stefania Stella, uh, uh, what's his name? David Warbeck and even had some music from Fatal Frames in the movie. But it was just like, it's like you just gave some teenagers a video camera and said, have fun. It, <laughs> it was just <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> okay, next I watched Love and Death in the Garden of the Gods. I swear I cannot ever remember that title. This is a 1972 Jalo. And this is a great time for me to mention our Discord. Jalo Submarine here on YouTube. He and I are mods on a Discord. Can you tell I totally know what I'm talking about? And it's for Jalo fans. So we have uh, categories, talk Jalo, horror, talk music, talk Polizio Teschi, talk cannibal films. If you don't know what a Discord is, it's kind of like a group chat, basically. So I'll have that linked below. If you haven't joined us, feel free. And what Tony has implemented graciously are regular watch parties. So Love and Death in the Garden of the Gods was our first watch party. And there are about five or six of us on there, but it was so fun. Admittedly, I can't give a proper criticism because I was kind of watching it while laughing texting and drinking wine. But things I do remember from this film is it's a visually stunning film starring Erica Blanc. And of course, as the title would suggest, we have a lot of like garden scenes. And it's just very, very lush and beautiful and floral. Next, I watched Baby Oopsie 2 and 3 because when I watch Baby Oopsie 1, I like to watch 2 and 3 just to kind of like keep it even. And then I put on demonic toys. I, I've i been wanting to watch some, some movies that are like cozy and entertaining, but also ones I don't have to like pay attention to fully. So I put demonic toys on over the course of a couple days just to unwind, but I'm just liking it more and more the more I watch it. I honestly think it's better than Puppet Master, even though Puppet Master gets a lot more attention. So if you like Full Moon and you haven't seen demonic toys, I would highly recommend it. And it's not just because Baby Oopsie is in it. And next, I re-watched Puppet Master from 1989. It was really good on a second watch. I think what stands out to me the most in Puppet Master is the characters. Next, I re-watched The Sweet Body of Deborah while I was painting this wall. And I have about 15 minutes left in another Baby Oopsie rewatch. And finally, for our last watch party, 
I watched Ghost House from 1988. This is uh, an Umberto Lindsay horror film. This was another watch party and I've always wanted to watch it because I like ghosts. So Ghost House, it was, I don't know, the paranormal elements weren't quite there for me, but I did like the setup of the story and I did like the characters and it was just oozing with 80s charm and had quite a, um, a memorable color palette. So again, I wasn't watching this as closely as I usually am with my first time watches because it was a watch party, but it was, it was like cute, you know? Okay, that's everything I watched, except I am halfway through Puppet Master 2. Um, so I'll talk about Puppet Master 2 next month. Now I'm trying to get better at closing remarks. So again, feel free to join our Jalo Discord. It's just an app and it's kind of like Slack or GroupMe or a group text. If you want to come on there and chat with us nonstop, all day every day. <laughs> or you can mute notifications and just come on when you feel like it. You can also follow me on Letterboxd, which I will have linked below. I write a review on every single first time watch and I also follow back everybody. So we can be friends on there if you want. And let me know what you watched this month. What kind of things did you love or hate? What you've been up to? It's been, yeah, a lot of rewatches for me this month. but. <laughs> I've been redoing this house, so it's been pretty busy. And if you if you have any suggestions on what kind of video you want me to make next, shoot me a little, let a hoe know. Give me a little something down below. The inspiration has not been flowing lately, but I'll see you next week.